Live from ClickOrlando.com, News 6 Plus, and WKMG, we're getting results in your neighborhood now at 6.30 p.m. Now 6.30, security concerns continue to rise across our coast as we enter another week of spring break. What one town is doing to help everyone feel more safe. But first... Kissimmee Police giving a major update on their investigation. Yeah, uh, investigators are looking into the murder of a missing teenage girl. Good evening, and thank you so much for joining us. I'm Ginger Gadsden, alongside Justin Wormuth. This is News 6 at 6.30. Yeah, it's okay. Across Central Florida, though, people are still asking, what happened? To Madeline Soto. Now, this is what we know so far. 13-year-old Madeline Soto was reported missing on February 26. She never made it to school that day. Then, two days later, her mom's boyfriend was arrested on sexual battery charges. And just two days after that, Madeline's body was found. Today, police told us Madeline's mother's boyfriend is locked up on sex crime charges, and he is not speaking to investigators. News 6's Catherine Silver was at today's news conference with the details on the case. There have been so many questions about the Madeline Soto case and Kissimmee's police chief is asking for patience. She says that attention to detail and diligence will be the key to this investigation. It's been almost a month since detectives believe 13 year old Madeline Soto was murdered, but no one has been charged with her death. Police call her mom's boyfriend, Stefan Stearns, the prime suspect. He was arrested after officers found disturbing images on his phone while investigating Maddie's disappearance. Since then, our investigation has been relentless, fueled by the unwavering commitment to uncover the truth. Kissimmee's chief of police answered questions Thursday as her department continues to piece together what happened to this young girl before her body was found in rural St. Cloud. Maddie was reported missing in February. Stearns told law enforcement he dropped her off at school, but investigators believe that never happened. Instead, we believe she was already dead at the time and that Stephen Stearns moved her body in the early morning hours on that day. A report from the Orange County Sheriff's Office shows Maddie's mother initially told deputies she saw her daughter getting ready for school that morning. The chief was specifically asked about her involvement in the investigation. Everyone that was close to Madeline is considered suspect until we have proven otherwise. She called it standard protocol and declined to share any more details at this point, saying there is still so much to uncover in a case that has captivated this community. Do you still feel like you have more questions than answers at this point? I think our questions are being answered slowly but surely. Um, you know, for the integrity of the investigation, we have to, you know, keep things close um, until such time as we hold those accountable for her death. The chief did say that everyone is cooperating with their investigation except for Stefan Stearns. He's still refusing to talk. One of the reasons they feel comfortable taking their time is because he's being held at the jail without bond. In Kissimmee, I'm Catherine Silver, getting results, News 6. And as we continue to learn more about this investigation, we are posting the latest updates on our website. Head to clickorlando.com slash Madeline Soto case. Turning now to your weather as we take a live look. Downtown Mount Dora, this is courtesy of the city of Mount Dora. Really nice night out there. Rain, though, on the way for tomorrow. Meteorologist, the chief, Tom Sorrell, is pinpointing the big changes. Come take a look where the rain is starting to show up. Right over here. Not in Orlando proper, but over here on the coast. Look at this stuff. See that? That's real. That's real rain. And over here, just outside of... St. Petersburg and Tampa, it looks to me like that's real too. Scattered showers are beginning to show up in the last 30 minutes or so, moving on shore. So that's kind of the leading edge of some of that rain that will get to us overnight. The bulk of it is still way back out here in the Gulf of Mexico, but eventually we'll get our showers. This beautiful run we've had, it's kind of over. Not yet, but late night tonight it will be. By midnight, we're mostly cloudy. By one in the morning, raining west. The overnight low in Orlando is 65. The rain will eventually get here. I'll be back to talk about exact timing for you. I'll show you that model run so you can figure out when it's good to be outside, when it's not, and when the dry slot will help us out tomorrow, and maybe you can get something done. See you in a few. Sounds good. Thank you, Tom. Get weather radar on the go, plus use live interactive radar with the free New 6 Pinpoint Weather app. All you have to do is search WKMG in your app store. Well, a project to make Daytona Beach Entertainment District safer is starting to finally take shape. For two years, we've told you city leaders have been working to get security cameras installed along Seabreeze Boulevard. 
The idea came after a big spike in crime in the area in recent years, and now we're told the cameras are officially going in. News 6's Molly Reed is in Daytona Beach with how the city is getting results. It's just some one additional thing to help the police control problems. High tech security cameras will soon stand watch above Seabreeze Boulevard in Daytona Beach. They're not using it to watch who's walking with who or any yeah. of that stuff. They're using it to prevent crime. It's a project that's been in the works for two years. City commissioners telling me the money has been there, but they ran into supply chain issues. The city has the poles and cameras in storage ready to go. Here's the picture of them. Now I'm told there will be eight 20 foot aluminum poles that the city will install here around Seabreeze Boulevard, then attach the cameras to them. The police here will then have real time access to them. Talk a little about how maybe the idea formed out of that based on what you guys were able to use to capture Jane McCain. That still will probably go down as one of the most complete investigations that this agency was a part of. It was during Bike Week 2022 when Chief Jakara Young says this man, Gene McKean, randomly attacked and killed a couple in the Seabreeze historic neighborhood. Police identified McKean by piecing together businesses surveillance video. Now to be able to have, you know, three times that amount in that area is just going to be a game changer. It's going to be phenomenal. Police have seen a rise in other crimes in the area in recent years, too. Chief Young opened a police substation here just last fall, so officers would be closer. Now, he says these cameras, which will provide 80 different views of Seabreeze, will allow the police to monitor crowds and react even quicker. Just the optics of having the surveillance cameras is going to be a deterrent. The city's IT team tells me that they will start installing them in about two weeks. There's a lot of electrical work that goes into it, though, so they're hoping to have them all installed by the end of April. In Daytona Beach, Volusia County, I'm Molly Reed getting results, News 6. Now to a life-saving program starting to get results and save lives in Orange County. Emergency crews are now able to give blood transfusions at the scene where seconds matter the most. The new program comes through a partnership with Orlando Health and One Blood. Crews are able to give blood rather than make patients wait to get to the hospital. First responders have been trained to give transfusions when they're called and there has been significant blood loss. So what we just saw there, she could be saving a life. That. Absolutely. Uh, that blood that just left here could absolutely be intercepting that crew that's in route to the hospital uh, to save a life. Phase one of the program rolled out today. Orange County is hopeful for an expansion down the road. Three, two, one. Ignition and lift off. Another successful launch to the International Space Station for SpaceX, this Falcon 9 rocket sending up more than 6,000 pounds of science investigations, food and supplies to the astronauts on the International Space Station. And its launches just like that one inspired Brevard County's area code, a countdown to one of the Space Coast's iconic launches. As we showed you in our 2019 story, Ozzy Osbourne was synonymous with Space View Park for decades as he broadcasted the latest launch updates using a microphone and a speaker. Now, this happens to be the first 321 day since Ozzy passed away. The 72 year old died in his sleep last summer. His family, though, continues to celebrate his life and his legacy in Brevard County. They spoke with News 6 reporter James Barbero. He's perhaps Brevard County's most influential space aficionado, Ozzy Osband, of course. And as the father of Brevard County's 321 area code, Ozzy also had his own unique style. From his long white hair and white beard to all the flair that he wore on his green shirts, always green because as Ozzy used to say, green means go. I first met this man who called himself the Rocket Hobo six years ago during the first Falcon Heavy launch. And I'll never forget how excited he was to see the big crowds. He said it reminded him of the space shuttle days. We came back to Space View Park a year later when our photojournalist Paul Giorgio followed Ozzy as he broadcasted the first Falcon Heavy night launch. Thank you for calling 321 Liftoff. How may I help you? I grew up interested in space. I'm too old to go, but I still like the idea of men and metal going into the sky. And here at Space View Park tonight, Ozzy's brother, Steve Osband, attending the celebration of 321 Day and also sticking around for the launch. 
How much would your brother love to be here right now? That's what he would be here for. Another great large rocket going in the sky and a resupply mission to continue to have manned space be a part of the human experience. What did your brother teach you about space flight? To dream, to show up and experience what is going on in the world. In Titusville, Brevard County, I'm James Sparvero, getting results news six. Great story, thank you James. Now to one of the top stories trending tonight on ClickOrlando.com. A major pet peeve mm. for drivers everywhere, turning without a signal. Oh, just stop. Mm. Uh, Trooper Steve tackles your questions about using a turn signal. Real good question here and a pretty good answer. Regarding the 100 foot turn signal law, how would one do that if the turn lane at the intersection is less than 100 feet? All right, Drew, let me break this down for you. Got a great shot here of the front of results one here as we were driving the other day. All right, so I totally understand what he's saying here. So if you were to want to get into this travel lane, obviously this turn lane's less than 100 feet, but what are you doing before you get into that turn lane? You're changing direction of your vehicle. So if we were driving in this direction and I am in this left through lane, my turn signal should be activated 100 feet before I move into this turning lane. I hope that's making a little bit of a sense here because your intention is to get into this turn lane and then a secondary movement is to make the left turn. So there would be a reason to have that turning signal on before you got into the turning lane. I hope that makes some sense. If you got a question you want me to answer it, let us know on our website. Head on over to clickorlando.com slash Steve. So this story, as you might imagine, has a lot of comments on clickorlando.com, including one from Marisol, who says, I thought everyone knew that. You know, I was thinking the same thing, Marisol. <laughs> User JS119 said, I'd be content if people would just use them, no matter the distance, talking about turn signals with that. I, I tend to agree. I mean, especially if you're taking a right on a, on a major road. Or just even trying to merge. Merge is, yeah. Yeah, but people don't let I, you, it's a game. They speed up. And by the way, how easy is it? It's so easy. Boom, boom. Done. Super easy. Staying on the same page of traffic <laughs> violations. This story getting a lot of buzz as well. Police in New Smyrna Beach warning about these fake parking tickets. Yeah. I can't even believe you had to say fake. They're fake. <laughs> that loose leaf paper and that pen, yeah, they posted this picture of the fake handwritten violation telling residents to call a number to pay 100 bucks for the violation. Police want everyone to know if you are getting a parking ticket, it won't look like that. And if you see one of these tickets, Call 911. I Not mean, even come close. on. <laughs> Not even close. I mean, at least you can understand what they wrote. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now to another top story. An arrest at Walt Disney World, and this is pretty crazy. A man forcefully ripped the Mickey ears off a woman's head. Apparently, this Illinois man thought the ears belonged to his daughter after she lost them on a ride. Now the woman said she was visiting Disney with her family when she heard the man yelling behind her, but of course she didn't think he was yelling at her her until he started yanking the ears off her head. Her husband intervened and the police had to get involved. No one was hurt in all of this, but the man was arrested on robbery charges. Does he not know those ears? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you bought the, probably the same ones. Just because you see someone with Mickey yeah, ears. Just don't, man, just go buy them again. I mean, they're Something not. Something about the crowds there just make people. I, it is. I've waited it all. Takes, I've waited 10 years to plan this it, trip. Uh, yeah. The money, the crowds. Give me my ears. It doesn't take much to set someone off. And here are the other top trending stories <laughs> right now over on clickorlando.com. So Simi Police continuing to put together the pieces surrounding the disappearance and murder of Madeline Soto. We told you about the top of this broadcast. Mm -hmm. Chief said everyone close to the teen is considered a suspect. Well, how about this one? 168 high school students are going to have to retake the ACT. No way. Uh, they are. The test was accidentally scheduled outside the set testing window. The school apologized for the inconvenience, and they totally own it. Uh, the kids will take the test after their spring break oh, on April good. 2nd, 3rd, and 4th, when they've forgotten everything. <laughs> That's exactly when you want to take a test, right after spring break. Uh, and this story has been picking up momentum throughout the week. We have told, told you about this at 6.30, seemingly every again. day. Yeah. That man banned for life from Bucky's, bringing that service duck with him. Wrinkle. That's against our <laughs> policy. And this gentleman, and what was his name again? Hugh, Hugh Man. Hugh Man, yeah. Something like that. He will never be allowed to step foot into another Bucky store ever again. Yeah.
There That's, we go. It's just crazy. Mm -hmm. And you can find all of the top stories on the homepage of ClickOrlando.com. And while you're there, just leave us a comment if you want to. <laughs> well, two major jackpots are growing bigger. And that means you could be lucky enough to win big this weekend when you can catch those next drawings and how much is up for grabs. First, though, a woman committing over... 50 years of volunteering and getting results. We'll introduce you to our Getting Results Award winner. That's coming up. You're watching New 6 at 6.30, live on New 6 Plus. We're getting results in Palm Coast, Lady Lake, and all of Central Florida. We'll be right back. Brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. Toyota, let's go places. Your Thursday evening traffic alert. We're going to have that same mess that we had last night. Just need you to pay attention. We've been doing pretty good with it. Westbound I-4 approaching our attractions area. Starts right around Central Florida Parkway, but primarily right at 535. You'll have that right lane blocked from right up at 535 all the way down towards US 192. This is part of our construction expansion. Just need you to pay attention. I'm Trooper Steve with your new 6 traffic alert. Drive safely. I'll catch you in the morning. Gas and grocery prices may have you pinching those pennies, but there are still some good deals out there. You just have to know where to look. You do have to know where to look. And New 6 anchor Julie Broughton visited a thrift store in Eustis that's been in, decade, been in business for decades. And this week's Getting Results Award winner has been volunteering there almost as long. Well, we're here in, in Eustis, Florida, and this is the St. Thomas Thrift Shop. It, it's a very old, old thrift shop. It's been in business for 75 years, uninterrupted. And for most of that time, this is also where you could find 87-year-old Sandra Pettit. So right now I'm marking, I'm putting out new merchandise and marking it. If you can believe it, she's been volunteering here since 1962. At that time, we were praying that we'd make $100 a week. Today, the secondhand store is a popular destination for antique dealers, flea market owners, and people just looking for a good deal. Everything is cash only, but it won't take much to walk out with some great bargains. This is an old house. The house is about 
It's over 100 years old. Volunteer Eleanor McIsaac gave me a tour. And each room is set up for a different kind of inventory. We have a kitchen and we have a jewelry shop. She wanted us to know about the thrift store and its special volunteer. So tell us about your, your longest running volunteer. Sandra is uh -huh. the longest volunteer. She's been coming here. She's a member of the church. I taught school for 44 years. <laughs> and raised five children and worked in the thrift yeah. shop. Once you retire and you've been busy, busy, busy your whole life, then you want something to do. So I kept doing this and doing more of it. And she's getting results. All money raised goes toward community outreach projects. So these are the most recent donations that the, uh, that the thrift shop has given. Mr. Honig has a community garden out in the, um, in the backyard here and this is the Special Olympic team for Lake County. It takes a lot of these stickers to raise the thousands the thrift store donates every six months. At least 30 to 40 different organizations. And then we help people if they have, if we hear a house burned or you know, any, any immediate needs, we do that too. The mission here is to give back to the community. And that's what's kept Pettit coming back all these years. Keep on going, as long as I can. <laughs> Till they throw me out of here, I guess. If you come back next year, you'll probably see me. Julie Broughton, <laughs> Getting Results, News 6. Uh, I want to go look for her. <laughs> me too. She right? seemed awesome. Isn't she great? Wow. And how adorable is she? Her hair is all done, that beautiful white sweater. I need to talk to her about she her beauty She loves staying routine. busy, though. Oh, yeah, that, I think that's the Five key. Five kids. That's the key. Continue to volunteer, <laughs> active in the church. Bravo to her. Mm -hmm. And St. Thomas Thrift Shop is always looking for some new people in the community to help out. You can find the grant application on their website. And if you know someone who's getting results, we'd like to know about them. There are so many folks out there doing some good work. And you can nominate by going to our website, clickorlando.com, and look in the top banner under Getting Results. You'll find the form, fill it out, and then you might just see them featured here in the coming weeks. All right, we are so close to the weekend. <laughs> what would make it better, Justin, than it just a few being the weekend? <laughs> how about becoming <laughs> how about becoming a billionaire? Oh yeah. The two too. biggest lotteries across the country, both having some pretty big jackpots. No one took home last night's six hundred eighty seven million dollar Powerball jackpot, but twenty seven lucky winners did take home at least fifty thousand dollars each. That's not bad. Saturday drawing is now climbing to an estimated seven hundred fifty million dollars. And tomorrow's Mega Millions drawing with an even bigger estimated jackpot of nine hundred seventy seven million dollars. You'll be able to watch both drawings on News 6 at 11. Again, Mega Millions and the nearly one billion dollar drawing is tomorrow night. Powerball seven hundred fifty million dollar jackpot is Saturday night. Just keep watching. Never turn us off. Just keep watching. <laughs> Look, I know the odds are always trash. You know, <laughs> you know the odds are awful. Uh -huh. Which one are you more likely with Mega Millions or Powerball? In Powerball, more likely. I think, I think Powerball. Powerball. It's like one in two hundred ninety-two yeah. million. The other one is like one in three hundred something million. I feel like it's probably because of the states that participate in Powerball versus Mega Millions. Perhaps. Are too populated. Yeah, populated. I think it's yeah. that that probably plays a role, but. I don't know. It's going to be raining something, not raining money for us, but it will be raining <laughs> no, tomorrow morning. It will. <laughs> Take a look at what's happening right now on radar. We've got a little bit of activity ongoing just off the coast side here that I want to start out with. It's raining just outside of Palm Harbor and Largo and all the way down to St. Petersburg and into Bradenton right now. Not raining hard, but you do see scattered showers. This is... This is kind of what we're talking about for the late night hours tonight. The rain is going to start to show up. You see a little bit of activity here beginning a little convergence zone going on. But big rain is still out there on the far side of all this. And let me widen the view out. You see what I mean? Little light spritzes of rain coming in. But look, way out here over the open water, I have the lightning tracker turned on. Kaboom. There you go. That's still farther west than Tallahassee. So this is the true leading edge of what I'm talking about for about... An arrival of 2, 3, 4, 5 o'clock in the morning, not these little sprinkles. I think much of this will simply fall apart as we head into the overnight hours. Tomorrow, on a scale of 1 to 10, with 10 being awesome, today was a big fat 9. Tomorrow's about a 5. It's going to be raining early. What's that? It really oh. dropped. <laughs> I thought she was like, what's wrong with you, Tom? Is it going to be bad? Well, no, it's not going to be bad. It's not going to be severe, but it is going to be wet. It's going to mess up the rush hour. People are trying to get to work in the morning. At least it's spring break for the kiddos, for some of you. So they don't have to stand out in the rain. Tonight, we're good. If you have outdoor plans tonight, dinner plans, 
temperatures dropping through the 60s and you should stay dry. But late night it all changes and tomorrow, look at that wind. 15 mile per hour wind tomorrow gusting to 23 and the wind gusts stick around all the way in to your weekend. Right now we're under the big ridge of high pressure. The high is way up north around Richmond. Tip on the edge, but this low is running underneath it and eventually this moisture does show up packing all that lightning you saw earlier. So tonight rain chance is 10%, but during the overnight they rock it to about 90%. Just about everyone will see some light rain at least during the overnight or through the day tomorrow as all of this rushes our way. Here's the way it looks. The low skirts along the Gulf Coast states and rolls all the way into South Carolina, pushing that cold front through here by Saturday into Sunday. So if there's gonna be severe weather, I think that holds off until Saturday when the front comes through. But watch this, tonight we're good, but late night, two, three, four o'clock in the morning, raining from Gainesville to Ocala, to the villages, to Sanford, all the way out to the Cape, between about five and eight o'clock. Then we hit a gap, could even be some sunshine in there. And then boom, more scattered showers in the afternoon, wrapping up around 8.30 or so. Then as we go into Saturday, the front passes through, and when it does, that's our best shot of severe weather is Saturday afternoon between 3 and 6. Lows tonight in the 60s in Orlando 65. Here's tomorrow. Your forecast is sponsored by Florida Lottery. Rain chances are up to 90% tomorrow. The daytime high should be about 74. Then on Saturday, we clear up, but a chance of severe weather late. Then on Sunday, 73 and Monday, 79. Thank you, Tom. A big celebration is underway at one of Central Florida's parks. Coming up, SeaWorld's big birthday and when you can get in on the celebration. Coming up in the morning, a Central Florida city asking people to leave their cars at home at least for a day. Where residents are being urged to bike to work and the local leader set to take part. We'll see you on News 6 Morning starting at 5. You gotta watch before you go. Sixty years of wonder, conservation, and thrills. Today, SeaWorld Orlando kicked off its anniversary celebrations, and it's bringing back some old favorites. 
But I'm excited today to announce one of my favorite friends is back. Shamu is back. You heard him. Shamu will be featured in all new character parade. New Six also got a look at the, fam the newly renovated Shamu Stadium and Penguin Trek construction. The family friendly coaster is on track to open this spring. A lot of people right, excited Shamu. about that. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for watching News 6 at 630. Stream News 6 online anytime on our News 6 Plus smart TV app. We break news on ClickOrlando.com. See you back here, not 11, but after basketball. We'll see you Friday. <laughs> see <ya>. Yeah. <laughs>